Welcome to the Private Practice Startup, where we inspire you from startup to mastery. We chat with entrepreneurs, experts in the mental health and business arenas, and successful private practitioners to give you the tools needed to make your dream practice a reality. Visit theprivatepracticestartup.com for awesome resources, free trainings, and so much more. Here are your hosts, Dr. Kate Campbell and Katie Lemieux. What's up, Startup Nation? I'm Dr. Kate Campbell, and I'm here with my awesome business partner, friend, co-host, all of those fun things. Well, thank you. That was quite an introduction, Katie Lemieux. Hey, everybody. We are back with another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast, and we are really excited about today's guest. We have Juan Ortega. He is a business coach, specifically with Action Coach, and Katie has worked with him in numerous capacities. I had the opportunity to meet him and see him in action at the beginning of last year, which was really cool. And before we get started with our topic, which is five steps to massive business results, sounds awesome, right? We just wanted to share a few resources with you all. We want to invite you to visit theprivatepracticestartup.com, head over to our resources tab, and there you will see our awesome selection of resources don't binge on them all at once. Uh, We encourage you to select the ones that are most relevant for you so that you can really get the most out of those resources. We've got the free HIPAA form, the A to Z cheat sheet. We've got our goals worksheet and much, much more. So make sure you check that out. And then also, if you're not already a member of our exclusive Insider Facebook group, we definitely invite you guys to join. Just request to be a part of the group and there you will meet all of our podcast guest experts, other private practitioners and professionals who really support one another along their private practice journey from startup to mastery. So Katie, why don't you share a little bit about how you met Juan and sure, so, fun facts about him. Yeah. So uh, Juan, like Kate had said, is an action coach, business coach. And I had the pleasure of meeting Juan through working with my business coach for a year, Michael Dill. And Juan and Michael put on an awesome 90-day planning period each 90 days right before the next um, quarter to really help you create massive business results with your business. And, you know, it's they don't they don't teach. It's fun. I, not that they don't teach. They teach, but they teach in a way that it's fun. It's experiential. It's exciting. So you get so much out of it. And it was just really a great um, experience for me and really helped me with my business. And actually, a lot of the stuff that I've learned from both of them, I utilize, Kate and I utilize here at the Private Practice startup. So just a little background on Juan. So Juan has 20 years of business experience that includes executive level positions in marketing, sales, and leadership. And for the past five years, Juan has focused his attention on helping business owners overcome their most difficult challenges in all types of industries, including both North and South America. Uh, The five steps to massive business results is essentially the five key ingredients necessary for accelerating your results in business and your life. It encompasses the key teachings of what Juan and Action Coach have been teaching all around the world for the past 22 years. So welcome, Juan. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for having me today. It's our pleasure. So just some awards, accomplishments, accolades. Uh, Action Coach overall has been recognized as the top business coaching firm in the world with a thousand offices in 50 countries. And Juan is actually one of the top 100 coaches globally. So that's awesome. He's married and has three daughters and a beagle named Bailey. That's right. I forgot I put that in there. (laughs) My Aunt Lisa has a beagle named Bailey. I guess it's a common beagle name. (laughs) It is. I think they come with the name. I'm not sure. (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah. So Juan, tell us a little bit about what led you into the business you're in now. Absolutely. Well, you know, I think that uh, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. And and even though the first 20 years of of my life didn't take off that way, I I went to, to work right away. I got my degree in, in business administration and, and went right to work. And I always felt as though I wanted to do something for myself, uh, by myself. And, and really, uh, it took me 20 years to figure that out. And uh, after a successful career in the hospitality industry, I, I finally figured out what it was. I had always read tons of different books, mainly business books, self-development, uh, personal help, all the different things. And I was always fascinated by that. And what actually led to the discovery of business coaching 
was um, I had read a book called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And if you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. Oh my and gosh, had- I'm reading it right now. And I've been wanting to read it for a while. And it's so funny, Michael randomly stopped by my house this week. And I was like, right, I was reading the book. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, it's talking straight to me. And he goes, Katie, everyone believes that that book was written for them. <laughs> That's so funny. And for those of you that may not know who Katie is referencing, Michael was her coach in action coach. And he actually was our number four podcast guest who talked a lot about time mastery. So you guys can always check that out. We'll add, we'll add the link for that one in our show notes page. Great. So what a coincidence. Yeah. So I read that book back in, I want to say it was like 2010 and put the book up in a shelf. Uh, a few months later, I was coming back from New York on a business trip and that term business coaching had stayed in my mind. I said, you know, that's great. And in my next life, I want to be a business coach. And sure enough, on this business trip, I pick up a magazine just to read on the airplane. And they had the top 100 franchises in the US. And number 24 on the list was this thing called Action Coach. And it said the world's leading business coaching firm. And I thought, wow, that's what Michael Gerber does. So I circled it, came home, jumped on the computer. And uh, within a day, I I told my wife that I was going to be quitting my executive position and going out on my own. Of course, she thought I was crazy. But sure enough, about four months later, I had um, resigned from my position and the rest is history. And, And that's really how I stumbled into business coaching. What would you say is the best advice that you've ever received that relates to building a business and really being an entrepreneur? You know, I think that the best advice would definitely have to be that just because you're in business for yourself doesn't mean that you need to be by yourself. And I I think that the whole premise of what I do, what we do as business coaches, is we provide, we're that other person. We are the sounding board. We are the advisor. We are the person from the outside looking in that helps you recognize and see your blind spots. And so the best advice would have to be get help. You know, there's no shame in in getting help and, and creating your circle of advisors and people that can help you see different angles on things. And, and it's guaranteed that you're going to get wherever you're going much, much faster with the team. Nice. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Private practice, it's it, it really takes a village. It does. Some people can think that, oh, I'm just going to go out on my own and do my own thing. But it is so important to have a community of people who can really support you along that journey. Absolutely. And having a coach is really a totally different perspective on business. I mean, I've learned so much from you guys, you know, when we talk about working in the business and working on the business, those differences, really just planning. Um, I know you're talking about the blind spots and you guys have a um, acronym, a BFO, a blind flashing observation, (laughs) like a duh, aha moment where you are able to see your blind spots and you can't see it a lot of times without a coach. So there's many things I've learned from you guys. I appreciate hearing that. Let's go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. Are you struggling to find ways to attract new clients and drive traffic to your private practice website? Or maybe you'd like to create or improve your website, but have no idea where to begin. Daniel Fava, founder of Create My Therapist website, is a website and WordPress expert whose passion is to help psychotherapists create websites that attract more clients through simple online marketing. After seeing how the website he built for his wife's counseling practice helped fill her calendar with clients, he began sharing his more than 15 years of online marketing and web design experience to help others do the same. Daniel offers web design services, consultations, online training, and tons of free resources to help therapists overcome tech fears and grow their businesses through online marketing. You can get his free access to library full of PDFs, cheat sheets, tutorials, and eBooks by visiting createmytherapistwebsite.com forward slash PPS, as in the private practice startup. Our experience working with Daniel has been so awesome. It's great to have somebody who actually can take care of our website needs so we can focus on what we're most passionate about. Daniel has been really easy to work with, super responsive, collaborative, and always gets the job done. We're so grateful to have him on our team. Juan, share with our audience something that you've had to overcome to be where you are in business today. You know, I think that the biggest thing that they don't tell you in business school, and um, I think everybody has to figure out the, the tough way, is that essentially at the end of the day, your business will never outgrow you. Your business will never grow faster than you. And so I, I think that the biggest hidden secret for some reason is that if you want your business to grow, you have to grow. You have to get better. You have to learn new things. You have to constantly put yourself out there in that 
uncomfortable zone. Um, otherwise, you just you just won't expand. And so uh, I, I think that the biggest learning and the challenge for me was to figure out what are my weaknesses, what are my blind spots, and get some help and do a lot of reading and soul searching because I, I now understand that the growth needs to happen with me first before it can materialize in the outer world, in, in, in the business aspect. I, I like what you said, and I don't know if this happens to you, Juan, but you know, when I become aware of a new, really amazing entrepreneur, I start like binging on that person. So I'm like binging on Gary Vaynerchuk right now. And he has this great quote where he says, every day I wake up and I think, how can I put myself out of business? He said, it's a lot better if you're putting yourself out of business than another company coming to put you out of business. And I think about like Blockbuster and Netflix, right? I know that Blockbuster had the opportunity to do what Netflix does and they turned it down. Um, And so Netflix became Netflix and Blockbuster went out of business. But, you know, I think that's so important. And also John Maxwell talks about that in regards to the lid theory of leadership, right? Is that I can only grow my team as much as I'm willing to grow. So the more that we're willing to grow, it's so important. And it's funny because, um, you know, my story, and I don't think I really shared this much, but I was really afraid of business and I didn't actually ever think I was going to go into business. I thought I was going to live and die in community mental health. And um, that's a really sad story to think, but like I, you know, I took the leap like many folks, um, but I often would talk about the lid theory and very much that my team could only grow as much as I would grow. And also I thought like once I was done with graduate school, I was so relieved to stop studying, but I will tell you, I have been learning and growing and I like binge on business all day long from the morning to the books, to the podcast while I take my shower, to going to sleep with, you know, business people talking in my ear. And it's super exciting. Like I love talking about business. Absolutely. Yeah, it is so inspiring. And it's important to invest in yourself just as much, if not more than in your business. So it's really, really important. Now let's go ahead and transition into the five steps to a massive business results. So what is tip number one? So tip number one, whether you're starting a new year, whether you're starting a new quarter, new business, whatever it is, step number one is to get absolutely clear with what your vision is. Uh, So whether you call it vision or whether you call it a dream, you have to have that final picture in your mind and it has to be crystal clear because otherwise, how do you go about building something if you're not really sure what it is that you're building? So step one is figure out, get clear. Make sure that it's written down and know exactly what it is that you're pursuing, uh, both in the short term, but especially in the long run. And I'm glad you say that. And one thing I'd like to add, Juan, is that you really need to schedule time to dream and don't just do it once, do it often. And I had just shared this. Kate and I are kind of doers by default. So a lot of times we have to remind ourselves to pump the brakes and take a step back. And actually, we're having a planning day next Friday. And I said, we can't be in the office. We got to go to Starbucks or something so we can create the atmosphere of really dreaming and visioning without the doing. Um, Because I don't know if most people are like us, but I just really get super caught up in the like, let's go and, and start taking action and strategies. And that doesn't always work as we do have to dream. Kate? It's so bad sometimes that I mean, Katie was joking in this email she sent me the other day. She was like, maybe we need to come up with a code word so that if we catch ourselves <laughs> jumping back into that doing mode, because we are, we go, 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 do, do, do. But to be able to take a step back and reflect is so important. So what's number two on? The second one is to now create your written goals. And the famous acronym that's been used over and over again, but it's still priceless, is the SMART acronym. So your goals need to be specific. They need to be measurable. They need to be attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Otherwise, they're just hopes and dreams. We need to have some specific goals. The goals tie into that dream and vision, and those goals now need to have a deadline. So whether they're annual goals or quarterly goals or really what do you want to accomplish today, it's important that you break things down into small bite-sized pieces, and that is your goals. We couldn't agree with you more. We love SMART goals at the Private Practice Startup. We actually just did a Get Your Goals On podcast uh, that we launched in the new year in 2017. And if you guys want to check that out, we'll make sure to include that link in our show notes page as well. What is number three? The third one, which I think is the part that really eludes most people, is learn figure out what it is that you need to learn. You know, I always say that if we had already learned how to do something, we would have already done it, right? So if we're trying to build a $100 million a year company, uh, if we knew how to do that, we'd already done that. And so 
what's missing? What is it that you need to learn? What's the missing puzzle piece that will help get you there? And so one of the things that I find that uh, a lot of entrepreneurs don't invest time in is, is in their own learning. And so uh, it's important that you understand, again, what, what's your skill set? What do you need to get better at? And make sure you have uh, part of your plan includes the learning piece to it. And how often would you recommend that people really need to take time to learn and improve? And where should they be focusing? Whether, and that's a great question. I think whether you, you know, binge your learning and do it all in, you know, one day or one week or something like that. um, I think you have to figure out what works for you. Um, Some people are really good at, you know, spending an hour or two a day reading a book, listening to a podcast, whatever it may be. Um, Other people find that it's better on the weekends, whatever it is. I, I think that regardless of how you break it out, um, I would say do it as often as you can so that it becomes a habit. And the most important thing is have goals around your learning. So maybe you say, I'm going to read, you know, three books a quarter. Okay. So that's one a month. And, you know, whether you do all three books in one weekend or you do a little bit at a time, it's up to you, but have some goals around the learning. You know, something that Katie does that I really admire, and I guess it's something that was inspired from the Action Coach training is she spent, she has a morning ritual where she reads every single morning, business related books, personal and professional development related books. And I really admire that. And for those of you that may not know, I have a toddler at home. And so it's really hard to find the time to do that because I'm working so hard to find that balance. And so my way of learning is to be able to listen to the podcast when I'm in the car, when I'm taking my son in the stroller around the park or around the neighborhood or getting ready in the morning. So that's kind of my way of doing that. But I look forward to getting to that point where I can actually read again. And I don't know if you know, guys, but this is like a free tip to everybody. But if you actually go on YouTube, a lot of times you can search a book and they have it on audio for free. So I found many books on YouTube for audio for free. So if it's hard to actually sit down and read, but you can incorporate it on a stroller walk or in the shower or eating or in your car, that's a great resource for folks to be able to learn without having to sit down and read. Hashtag ninja tip. Ninja right? tip. Hashtag ninja tip for sure. Um, and one thing I also want that I learned from you guys in regards to what you're saying about learning is that, you know, we will put in our schedule all the urgent urgent or I guess the illusion of urgent things, right? Doing email, running to the doctor, picking up this, doing that. But we really also need to schedule time for our own learning, whether that's attending a training or seminar, or like Kate said is, you know, my morning ritual is doing those things. And if I do them first thing in the morning, they get done and they're in my schedule and they're part of my day. So I would just really encourage everybody if learning is part of your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner, as it should be, is you got to block that out and, and be consistent and stick with it. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. And one one small tip there, uh, you know, I find the biggest missed opportunity in terms of learning is your own car. You know, think of how many millions of people spend hours, hours each week commuting to and from the office. And I know it's so tempting to put on our favorite songs and sing along to the same, same 80s, 90s songs that we've been listening forever. But how about instead of our favorite songs, what if we put some audiobooks in our car And if you just do that alone, you could probably add like five more books a year that you would read just from the time that you spend in traffic. Yeah, the audiobooks are great for that. And the podcasts are great for that, too. Yes, absolutely. So let's jump down to number four. So what's number four? Number four is now that you know what your vision is, you know what your goals are, and you know what you need to learn, create a plan. Make sure that that plan includes the vision, the goals, and the learning. That plan should be an annual plan. And then we break it down into quarters. And as, as both of you know, um, we actually break the quarter down into weeks. And so what we do for our clients is we set up 13-week calendars, which is basically your quarter. And uh, once you know and you figure out what you're doing on a weekly basis, it's so easy to hold yourself accountable. It's really easy for us coaches to hold our clients accountable. And now you have this big project now broken down into bite-sized pieces. So that works really, really well. So just to review, we have goal number one, dream. Goal number two, setting the SMART goals. Goal number three, learning. Goal number four, planning. And what is goal number five? The five is kind of the obvious one is to take massive action. And we always say uh, that you probably need to take more action than you think. And um, Grant Cardone, um, I'm following him quite a bit right now. He's a great sales uh, trainer and speaker. Uh, Grant has a book called 10X. And and basically the premise of his book 
uh, at 10x is he's saying, look, you need to take 10 times the action that you need in order to achieve your goals. Because uh, oftentimes what happens is we just don't do it enough of. Uh, we're doing all the right things. Maybe we're doing them the right way. Maybe we're just not doing enough. And so we need to 10x everything. In other words, take massive action. I love it. I love these five steps. It sounds really, really awesome. Any other thoughts or anything like that on the five steps or anything else you want to add? Yes. You know, one exercise that we have our clients do is, you know, once you know what these five kind of ingredients are to, to getting massive results is give yourself a rating from one to 10 and score yourself, you know, one being low, 10 being really high and, and multiply them down and figure and come up with a score. The idea and the challenge uh, in the next 12 months is for you not to be tens all the way down because I don't think anyone is a 10 in every area. It's, it's actually just figure out what you can do to bump your score up by one each. So if dream, you, you gave yourself a seven, what do you need to do to become an eight? If in terms of learning, you're a six, what do you need to do to be, become a seven? If you can just add one simple point to each of the five areas, when you redo the math, it turns out to be massive. Uh, results. So put a score to it and you can figure out where you are today in these five areas. So funny, Katie and I are looking at each other and reading each other's minds right now because a lot of times we have one brain because we work together so much and think so much alike. But as therapists, that's very similar to solution-focused scaling. So I'm sure a lot of you therapists use that in your practice with your clients. So it's so helpful to also incorporate that into your relationship with your business. And it's funny that you're talking about like scaling. I, I had this thought as I was working out this week. I'm like, what if I just adopted the mantra this year of just one more, just one more, just one more, right? Like how much more stuff could I do or get done or further could I push myself if I did just one more push up or just one more call that day? You know, what would life be like? But I really like the idea of 10 times more and taking massive action that way. Juan, what do you want to make sure our listeners take away from your message today? I think the the key message, and that's this is something that uh, we teach all around the world, and it's been said by many of the great business thinkers uh, in the last 100 years, is you need to uh, work on yourself uh, just as hard as you work on your business. And and I think Jim Rohn said it best: work, you know, just as hard on yourself because at the end of the day, yeah, your business is an extension of you. And so, um, if you want your business to flourish, you need to flourish. So. Uh, I think that's the big takeaway is that it's not just, you know, marketing and sales and financials and, you know, some of the tangible hard items. It's the soft things that really make a difference. The little things that we often don't think about. And we know you have a book coming out soon, which we're excited about. And we shared already the E-Myth 10 times. So we'll make sure to include those books in the show notes. But Juan, tell our listeners about your new book that's coming out, Transcend. Yes, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, the title of the book is Transcend, uh, Grow Your Business, Crush the Competition, and Disrupt the Industry. And it's basically everything that I've learned, uh, not only in my life and my business experience, but really what I've learned in the last five years coaching uh, entrepreneurs, businesses, and business owners of all types, and really how to stand out and how to come in and not just not just do well, but really crush the competition. And um, I'm really excited about it. And uh, uh, I know we're going to talk about the gift in, in just a minute, but I would like to extend uh, a, an offer to your listeners uh, when the book comes out. You know what? I don't think I've ever cursed on this podcast, but I'm about to because that's a badass title for a book. It I is. really, really like that. Ah, thank you so much. Yeah, that's super cool. And I, I will. I hope I will get Kate and I will get a free copy when the book comes out as well. We will definitely read it and maybe write a review and all that great stuff for you. Yeah, it autographed sounds, and everything. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds really great. So, and I know that yeah, you wanted to talk about the giveaway. So, what's the giveaway? Yeah, the the giveaway to your listeners is uh, if if they liked what they heard and they have some tough questions or something that's been keeping them up at night. You know, I'm, I'm kind of crazy like that. I want to hear what those are. I want to help you with them. So I'd like to uh, extend 30 minutes of my time for each of your listeners. Uh, call me with your challenges and questions, anything business related. I'm here to help. Um, i gladly give them 30 minutes of my time. And then also for anybody that does call in, um, I'm also going to put them on a list. And as soon as the book is available in PDF format, I'm going to email them a copy of the book free of charge. That's really awesome, Juan. And I just want to give you and Michael and the whole Action Coach community a plug is that 
again, I learned so much from you guys and obviously a lot that we incorporate today in the private practice startup. And, you know, even just working with Juan or Michael or, you know, getting to one of their 90 day planning periods or even do private practice coaching with us, you're going to get a total different outlook um, on business. And I continue to stay connected with you guys because even in just small conversations, I grow. So I really appreciate you being here and participating in our podcast and adding such awesome value to our listeners. So it was great to have you today. Yeah, it's been really great to reconnect with you, Juan. And thank you so much for being on the show and sharing so much value with Startup Nation. Thank you. It's been my honor and my pleasure. And it's been a lot of fun, ladies. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So Startup Nation, we hope you enjoyed today's podcast with Juan Ortega. Please make sure that you check out our show notes page for all of the tips, books, resources, links, everything that we discussed on the show. We always appreciate your listenership and value your input. So make sure to share our show with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. And um, don't forget to share with us any topics that you're struggling with or topics that you'd like to see us present on and find an expert to help you with something that you're struggling with in your own private practice journey. So don't forget our our resources that we offered in the beginning of the show. And again, it's totally cool for you to share this with your friends and colleagues. We hope you have an awesome, inspired day, and we look forward to continuing to inspire your journey from startup to mastery. See you later, Startup Nation. Thanks for joining us on The Private Practice Startup. Visit theprivatepracticestartup.com for awesome resources, free trainings, attorney-approved private practice paperwork, and so much more. 